I think I'm really excited today to talk about dealing with clients who ghost you because I think it's something we've both dealt with. And I think as a new coach, it can be something that really unsettles you and unnerves you and causes so much self-doubt to the point that I think some coaches quit when they go through this and when they experience this, or if they're not quitting, it, it really spirals you down um, quite a bit. So yeah, I'm really excited for us to talk about this. And it kind of came up because the other week on one of your group calls, you know, you had a client who had been ghosted by one of her, her clients. And she was just sharing, you know, how that kind of caused so much self doubt within her within her offer with what she was doing. Um, and so yeah, I think it's really good that we're going to be talking about this today. For sure. Um, and I know you understand all of that uh, when it comes to ghosting, because I was actually really hurt when you ghosted me when you were uh, <laughs> going through our sales process, and then you just all of a sudden just wouldn't respond. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't uh, think you ghosted us. Um, I didn't ghost. I just no. took a few days to respond. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't even remember. I did I, not ghost. I, okay, okay, that's good. Uh, um, well, yeah, look, I, I think that ghosting is very prevalent in our society. It's so funny. I don't know that mm -hmm. that would have ever happened pre-internet and pre-social media, pre-iPhone um, or pre-texting days, I should say. Um, but ghosting is something that is like a real thing in our society. And it's uh, it's very annoying. I think we've all been ghosted at, at one point. And I, I'll be honest, I'm going to get very open with you guys here today and transparent. I have ghosted people as well. Um, I have. You're uh, Robin, on the other you side. Shocked. Oh my yeah. goodness. I am shocked. shocked. I don't think I've ever ghosted anyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, look, there's like, what's really interesting about ghosting is as someone who has ghosted someone before. Now, what I really, I mean, like to get more specific of like, yeah, I have like ghosted probably in a sales process. Um, you know, and, and I think like, this is, I guess, in my defense is it's more so that I like suck at texting. Like I really, like I got 150 messages, unread messages in my text right now. And then that's only text. I have WhatsApp. I have my DMS and my Instagram, my Facebook. So I get behind on messages and then it gets to a point where you get so behind that you're just like, Oh, well, fuck now it's like, and then the pressure builds and you're like, Oh my God. And now it's almost ridiculous mm -hmm. that you just haven't got back to this person. And it starts to slip in your mind. You're like, Oh, I need to get back to this person. Yeah. I would say like I've quote unquote ghosted a lot of people, but it's not intentional. It's, I think some people ghost because they're um, unwilling to just tell people the truth. Like I have no problem just saying no to someone. Um, I, I don't struggle with, um, building up the courage to say that. I think a lot of people are afraid to, and I think that's why a lot of people ghost is because they don't have good news for you. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not as much the, I'm, uh, afraid to deliver the inconvenient truth or news. I think it's more so just like, I get really behind on my messages and then it gets to a point where it's ridiculous and then I keep pushing it off. And then next thing you know, it's like, well, fuck, like I, it's, it's beyond it's past the point of repair at this point so um but it's not something i would ever be proud of when it comes to ghosting you know someone and not getting back to someone it's it's not something that i i i would say that the most noble thing you can do is to just tell people you know how it is and get back to them in a, a prompt if you've had a some sort of engagement with them and yeah. and and you know i think that's just the right thing to do but it happens. It really happens. So what do we do? I think that Robin, we should approach it on two different, uh, in two different ways. There's a prospect that goes to you and then a client that goes to you. Yeah. So and what do you, <laughs> yeah. And what? There's a big difference between those two. Right. So, yeah. 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 Prospect. Pro let's start with prospects. Cause that's earlier on in the, the, the process. So a prospect, by the way, just so you guys know what we're talking about when it comes to, you know, a prospect ghosting you is you have a lead. So they become a prospect. They, let's say, book a call or you have some sort of previous communication with them or engagement with them. And so let's say you you prospect them in the DMs and you invite them to a call and they're excited and they're like, oh, yeah, let's do it. 
and then um, they sign up for a call. You have a great call with them and you go through everything and they're like, you know, I just need a day to think about it because you pitch them your program. And then you follow up with them in 24 hours, like you said you would, and you don't hear back from them. Mm -hmm. And then another day goes by and you don't hear back from them. And then they just ghost. So what do we do in that situation? What are your thoughts, Robin? Yeah. So, I mean, this situation happens. I've had it happen. And what's hard is that you will, by that point, have built some kind of relationship with them. So it's not like they some random people in the DMs, which you kind of expect a certain amount of ghosting in the DMs. It's just how people function. But once you've actually spent your time, given them a free call, built that relationship, nurtured it a bit, and then they go and ghost you when you ended things on really good terms, um, it can be upsetting. And I think people will reach out maybe once or twice and then they'll kind of give up and just be like, oh, well, lost cause. And I think what you shared earlier about your ghosting <laughs> habits, actually, it's going to be really helpful for somebody listening to this just to be reminded that, okay, sometimes it's that people, I think generally a lot of people already struggle with having difficult conversations and saying no. And that to me is a sign they need more coaching than most people. Um, so somebody who's ghosting you is probably an even better client, potential client than you would have anticipated, but they could just be ghosting you because they've realized, hey, financially, I can't make it work. I'm scared to do this. I don't trust myself that I'm actually going to show up for the program. That's a big one. Um, or their partner has said no, and they just feel embarrassed to come back or they've had bad experiences in the past with like pushy salespeople um, that they feel like they just have to just not respond or they just super busy and they mean to reply and they just have so much going on and then it gets awkward a couple of days later when they're like oh I feel bad because I built like this person was actually really nice to me on the call I built a really like lovely relationship with them on one level I've been listening to their podcast their advice has helped me so much and then I ghosted them and now I feel like embarrassed to come back yeah, and I think it's useful to understand that it's probably coming from two, uh, one of two places. When I've ghosted people in my past, it's always because, and look, this is, I know this is just an excuse. I'm not suggesting that this justifies it, but it's always been because I have very little bandwidth. You know what I mean? It, it's, again, that is a major reason why I think a lot of people ghost because they get fucking busy and busy and then their messages pile up and then all of a sudden they have 12 unanswered messages and that can get overwhelming when you have 12 people that you got to get back to or even five people you got to get back to. And, and then, so there's that. And then there's the other situation like what you're talking about where it's like they're afraid to tell you no. They're afraid mm -hmm. to reject you because maybe they have some people pleasing tendencies, which is uh, very much prevalent in our society as well, too. So I think it's useful to know that when you're getting ghosted, it's probably from one or two of those areas. So what I would do is I would really focus on trying to send a, an, uh, a, a response that caters to both of those. So yeah. The first one I would try, you could try. These are just ideas and examples. By the way, once they've ghosted you, the only goal is to just get them to message you back. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, you're never going to get it, the answer you were looking for from that initial message. Exactly. It's just getting so, a normal reply. Exactly. So I think mm -hmm. the worst thing that you can do is to try and say what every other salesperson would say. Hey, just following up just checking in. I haven't heard from you for a few days. Hey, do you still have any interest in changing your life and taking us up on that offer? Like that is honestly something that I would say is probably the worst approach. Well, the worst approach would be to not do anything because I would say that a certain percentage of the people that goes to you, if you keep going at it and be relentless and persistent about it, you will eventually get a portion of those people to respond back to you. And then a portion of those people will sign up. So you are leaving money on the table if you just don't say anything. The second worst response would be something that every other salesperson would say. And then the best approach, I think there's a couple, you could take the approach of you're worried about them and you're, you're just concerned about them. 
and you're almost like raising an alarm inside of that like you're 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 instill or, or triggering this alarm inside of them so that they feel like oh if i don't get back to this person he's going to start worrying about me you know more and more and more and that could mm -hmm. become a problem and at robin we've had conversations about this you've taken this approach yeah. with some people who won't get back to you and, and it's worked um i think that caters to the person who's afraid to deliver bad news mm -hmm. because often people pleasers are kind of uh, you know more emotional uh they have higher emotional capacity and they feel emotions a little they, they have a lot of depth in their consciousness and they feel hard so it's like if you just say hey i just want to let you know i'm actually worried about you concerned i you know don't know why you, you aren't responding and you know however you have to phrase it and just say hey like even just give them a word to say back and just say you know can you just can you just write back safe if you're if you're doing well like you know just give them one word to make it easy for them and just say you know at first i thought okay maybe i'll hear back from you and now i'm just getting a little concerned right so mm -hmm. that's one approach to take the the other approach i think is an intrigue uh approach which i think works really well for why i sometimes don't get back to people because uh, of the low bandwidth that I have and then the messages that are piling up. Well, first off, if you send any message, it's going to ping it back to the top. So then I'm going to see it again. And you say something that's completely unrelated. You know, you could say honestly anything. You could say, hey, Johnny, I actually have good news and bad news, dot, dot, dot. And, you know, that to me, if I were to have gone through a sales process and decided that I just don't have the bandwidth to get back to someone and my message was piling up and they were to say, hey, I have really good news, but I also have really bad news. And I don't even know what you would say to that. You just have to make sure that when they respond that you actually <laughs> have good news and bad news. And it could be a joke. You could kind of joke about it or you could say some really good news and some really bad news and you could actually make it really pertinent to what you said. So I think those are a couple strategies, but the, the lesson here is to do not be like an average salesperson and say what's conventional because that often won't work and do not not say anything. You got to give it a shot. Say something that is either I'm worried about you in that realm or something that will intrigue them and make them so curious that they just have to answer. Yeah, that's such good advice. And I mean, I've used um, both of those before, but if those get responses when you're sending like, hey, why are you ghosting me or following? I'm following up again and this, 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 like that just people just disengage completely. They don't 100%. care anymore that they're ghosting you. They're like, oh, I, I made the right decision here. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I, I love that advice. And yeah. Okay. What about a client that ghosts yeah, you? This happens this is, surprisingly. This is really difficult to deal with actually because... I mean, your clients pay a lot of money to work with you typically as a coach. And in my mind, the only reason a client is going to ghost you is if they're not really happy with the program. Um, but I've actually, I don't know if you want me to share my experience with this, but sure. I have actually had a client ghost me who I got incredible results for, like incredible results. And I she was one of my very first clients when I was a new coach and I did so much. I went above and beyond for this client. I remember her website got hacked. I had insiders at the website agent like Shopify. I got them to drop everything. We got her website back from these hackers. Like I went above and beyond. She got incredible results, grew her business so much. She even did like a little written testimonial, but she would not show up to some calls. And then like I'd reschedule and like she would just be like driving and be like, oh, take notes and do this for me. And like basically treating me like a personal assistant. And at one point I just put a boundary down because I would text clients before the call. I would like make sure they were ready, like all this stuff. And I remember I text her just reminding her 30 minutes time. We're getting on our call. She's like, yeah, I'll be there. And you know what? She didn't show up. I saw on Instagram, she decided to go hiking with her son. She never replied to my messages. I tried to call her and she just has never reached out to me again since then. I tried everything and that was extremely hurtful to me because I had gone above and beyond. She had given me testimonials of how much her business had changed. But because I then set a boundary and I actually like 
sets a boundary with all my clients like hey if you don't show up I'm not rescheduling your calls she took that badly and so that was a situation more of like it wasn't that she wasn't getting results or wasn't happy. It was that maybe I handled it, maybe not in the best way, but I just set a boundary with all my clients. I just said, hey, from now on, if you don't show up to calls, like it, we're not rescheduling, that's it. And um, I put some other boundaries in place. And <laughs> I mean, that that was the wow. situation, but it was very unsettling. Um, and I think for newer coaches, like, it's like, wow, I, I poured so much into you. I was supporting you. You were doing well. And I like, how can somebody do this? Yeah. So the, the, thanks for sharing that story. Um, cause it helps people get an idea of what can happen and, and it does happen. Mm. I think the first lessons there are number one, do not take it personally. And number two, do not let it shake your confidence, right? Because that that's really ultimately on this call that we had in the Business Academy. We had one of our clients come uh, to the call and say that one of her clients, one of her good clients was ghosting her and that it was really shaking her confidence and that it was then kind of like making her have a hard time, you know, continuing on and saying, well, like, you know, man, I, I had this client and, uh, you know, she won't even talk to me. And now I'm wondering if, is it my program? Is it me? Is it my coaching? It's to not let those shake you, right? And it was interesting because I really kind of essentially asked her like, well, what evidence do you have that you're not good enough to, to be a coach, right? And it was really just this one ghosting incident. But then she also had a bunch of other clients that had great experiences. She had more clients who had great experiences than way more than this one that was ghosting her. So it's like, that's a really good thing when you're experiencing self doubt is to just ask yourself, what evidence do I have? Mm. Right. And we don't even know if someone ghosts you, if it's really even your fault. Often it's because maybe they don't want to show up. They're struggling to show up or they have some sort of excuse that's getting in the way or block or barrier that's getting in the way of them showing up. So instead of them telling you again, the inconvenient truth, it's easier and more convenient to just not answer you. Yeah, 100%. And I think just like taking a step back and looking at like, well, what are the potential reasons here? Because maybe in some situations, your course actually does need improvement. Maybe in some situations, there are like things you could be doing better. And maybe that is something to look at, but often it's, it's nothing to do with you at all. And, you know, I think we also forget that people are going through so much in their lives. Like when I just look at my clients, how many of them are going through just a lot in life, like deaths and like very traumatic things all the time happening to different people. And they have, I've had clients who I'll reach out just to check in because I haven't seen them for a while and I don't hear a response and I know like, oh, they're going through a tough time, like, and I'll reach back out. And um, they're always so, so grateful when you do that. But I think it's what you shared so important to like take a step back and look at, okay, well, what are the potential reasons? Yeah, there's so many things and we don't want to take that personally. And we want to look at like, all the other clients, because if all your clients are ghosting you, that's a problem. But yes, <laughs> you know, if it's like 1% or one or two, it's just like, okay, this is more a them problem. And yeah, let's see if we can still help them through it and get them back on board um, and identify what's going on there. So uh, to wrap this up, let's talk about, I think there's four things. Number one, don't take it personally. You shouldn't take anything personally. If you've ever read the book, the Four Agreements. It is one of the best personal growth uh, books of all time. If you haven't read it, I definitely suggest you read it. One of the agreements is to not take anything personally and your life will be much better without taking things personally. Number two, ask yourself, what evidence do I have of if, if it instills self-doubt in you, what evidence do you have? And look, if there's enough evidence to show you that you do need to be better, like Robin said, take responsibility, be better. What needs to change? Don't beat yourself up. Don't shame yourself. What needs to be better? That's It's as simple as that. So what evidence do you have? And you're probably going to come to the conclusion that you don't have much evidence uh, that you should have self-doubt. Number three, I think the approach of you know how you can deal with it is you should reach out and show 
that you are concerned about them because maybe something did happen. So I think you should reach out. And when you do reach out, you should say that you're concerned and you're worried about them and that you are here for them. And that's the fourth thing, which is like, just remind them that you are ready, willing, and able to help and support them to get through anything they're going through at any time and that you're one message away and just make sure that you've done everything in your power to show up halfway because clients have to meet you halfway. And if they don't, and you guys don't meet halfway together, there is no client and coach relationship. There is no transformational journey Mm -hmm. that they go through. It's really just at the end of the day, not going to turn out well. So um, those are the four steps that I would say. And then guess what? I'm going to add a fifth one. If they don't get back to you, surrender, accept it, let it go and move on Mm. and focus on the clients who are showing up. Yeah, that's such great advice. And I think like ultimately as the, as the coach, you have to take the lead and like bridging that gap when they are ghosting you, you have to be like the bigger one and like reach out to them and actually show up for them. And then, yeah, if they don't get back to you, let it be like, let it be what it is. You can only do so much, um, but you do let have to put be, that in. <laughs> let it be, let it be, let it be. How's that? Is that not bad? It's actually eh? really good. <laughs> Come yeah. On, <laughs> New outro. <laughs> Come on. New outro. <laughs> New <yeah>. outro. <laughs> We should have there got you singing will be the an intro. Answer, let it be, <laughs> let it be. Maybe, maybe Mike, our editor, maybe, maybe you can put <laughs> you "Let can It make... Be" as the outro uh, for this this podcast. That would be really cool. Let's see if he does I think it. It would be very, yeah, I like it. It would be very, <laughs> it's very calming. <laughs> you you know what song I'm talking about, right, Robin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The Beatles, man. Okay. Um. I think I think we've exhausted this topic and uh, we gave the folks everything that they need. And uh, I think we should uh, just say farewell. And I'm going to let you do the outro because I let you do the intro. (laughs) Now I'm going to put you on the spot. You put me on the spot for that. intro. As Let It Be (laughs) plays in the outro here. Why don't you send us home, Robin? Yeah, well, this has been really fun. And I think for anyone who's listening, who's like, building your business and you're tired of doing it alone, come and join us. We have an incredible community of over 120 coaches from around the world, all doing the same thing, all building and scaling their coaching businesses. Um, And we have got the 90 day um, blueprint for actually doing just that. It's the passion to profit blueprint where we walk you day by day through doing the tasks that are actually required to grow your business. Um, So it's very much step by step, day by day. It's exactly the same steps I took to build my coaching business. And we have group coaching calls with Kayla and I every single week, an incredible community. Um, So if that sounds exciting to you, you can go ahead and book in a free uh, free call (laughs) with one of our elite coaches. And um, you can go to the awbiz.com. The awbiz.com. Com. Yes. And it is the bomb.com. It really is. And in our community, there will be an answer. There it be. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and All you'll right. get more of Kayla's singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, my friends. Have a great rest of your day and your week. And we will see you on the next one.